Sierra and I took a cruise up the Columbia and Snake Rivers. On the way back we stopped at Richmond and uh, this is where most of the passengers took a bus tour. And here's Sharon at the railing. But uh, I had decided that I needed some exercise. So I walked two miles along the Columbia going south. Instead of walking back, this fellow Ray was kind enough to give me a ride back on his jet boat. Uh, National Monument. Right. And uh, talk about the history, about the geology, right. the <laughs> flora and the fauna. Yeah. They get a pretty good tour. Well, you know, and my wife right now is on a tour, a bus tour, that goes over to the Hanford, to the uh, visitor center over there. Okay. But I, I'm kind of a maverick. I uh, decided I'm going to stay ashore or walk around there a little bit. Good and in you. fact, there's a, a place I understand where I can rent a bicycle, so. If you see a bunch of big fish jumping in the river, the salmon, yeah. the spring salmon are starting to run right now. All right, yeah. As a fisherman, can you fish over here all year round? Oh yeah. Yeah, all right. But you do get snow, of course, over here. Yeah, not a lot. It usually lasts about two, maybe three weeks to know. All right. Yeah, we virtually can golf year-round. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> After Ray dropped me off, I walked a couple blocks to a bike store where I rented this bicycle. Going north, I pelled six miles and got close to the Hanford plutonium reactors, uh, but obviously it, they were not available to be visited. Richland uh, actually seems to be proud of their uh, involvement with nuclear power. Here's a monument of the first nuclear submarine, the Trident. It was the first sub to go around the world completely submerged. So uh, back to the bicycle and I think this is as far north as I want to go. So I'll go back the way I came. I needed some lunch, so I stopped at the Atomic Ale, a microbrewery with some uh, unusual beers. I was brave and ordered a plutonium ale. While I was uh, eating some pizza and then drinking the ale, uh, the fellow behind the counter and I started to talk. He was the brewmaster and he took me uh, through the kitchen into a to the uh, brewery, and I'm sorry, what is your name again? My name is John. John, I'm Jay. Good to meet you. Yeah, you lead the way, of course. Pardon the little mess in here. It's a small workspace, but it's workable. Good, <laughs> yeah. Turn the fan off, so there's not so much background noise. But uh, this is our system. Uh, this is a three barrel system. Um, brews three barrels, 90, roughly 93 gallons at a time. Okay. Uh, this is the mash tun. So what happens is the grain, this, this gets sealed up, you start filling it up with water. Uh -huh. As you're filling it with water, you put the grain in, Okay. and you stir it around. We've got some paddles over here and stuff. Okay, uh, is the grain a mixture or just a wheat? 
It's a uh, processed barley. Barley. So barley. some of it's, you know, all of it gets processed just a little bit differently, so it gives out different flavors, colors, things right. like that, depending on how it's processed. Right, okay. Uh, John went into great details about his beer brewing. Again, his time out for me was to uh, reinforce what I have always said. Ask politely and you might get a lot of nice responses from people. Ray and John here were perfect examples. And then the grain sits in there for a period of time yeah. and uh, does what's called mashing. Yeah. And uh, basically yeah. makes a, uh, a sugar water out of it mm -hmm. is, is what it does. It extracts the sugars out of it. Back on the boat it was time for some hot tubbing. And then I also got a private gin tour from Casey, our bo boat's bartender. Can explain again what the different kinds of gin we're looking at over here? Absolutely. We're going right. to start with the oldest, which is a Plymouth dry gin from England. All uh, right. We're going to have a something different here. This is a New World gin. This is a Ransom. Uh, it is from Oregon. Uh, they actually age it in bourbon barrels, so it's going to have a nice, beautiful uh, baking spice. It has a little bit of vanilla, has a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg to it. We're going to have our Genevieve, which is also old style gin. Uh, a little more lemon, a uh, nice dry finish on that one. Right, I remember oh, that's from the, Amsterdam, uh, that's where I came mm -hmm. from, you know. Uh, yeah. The Hendrix is from Scotland. They actually distill it with cucumbers. Uh, so actually a really nice way to do this is a martini with some uh, cucumbers bottled into it for some yeah. extra flavor. Uh, the uh, Gun Club Gin is a higher proof gin here. Uh, a lot more uh, citrus notes and bright floral notes. And then the Aviation Gin is a Portland-based gin, and it's a really good balance between your citrus, your lemon, and your juniper on there, and a little bit of lavender on this one. Perfect. Those last two is what I had. Uh, you helped me with a martini. Yeah. Would you yeah. like to do a gin two. martini on one? Oh, what no, I'm going to wait a little bit, but thank you. It was another full, nice day.